Welcome to the tutorial video on Twine. In this video, I'm going to review the data structure strings within SugarCube 2.36. So remember, of course, that every time we work with SugarCube, we're always, always also working with JavaScript. SugarCube is syntactical. Sugar sits on top of JavaScript. This means we can access the various data structures within JavaScript in SugarCube. One of these data structures is called strings. Now, it may seem strange to think of string as a data structure because we often use it alongside other things like numbers, and it can seem odd to think of it as its own structure of things. But the term string and the idea of a string as a data structure dates back a very, very long time. In fact, in other earlier programming languages, strings did not exist. They were simply special arrays that contained symbols. So while it can seem strange, most of the functionality that we ascribe to arrays, that is accessing things by index or position, doing things like does this include, and using for macros or for loops, all also apply to strings within JavaScript because they're building on ideas from earlier programming languages. So for example, if we have a string right here, which of course string is some enclosing of symbols, letters, numbers, and single or double quotation marks, so if we have a string right here, temporary variable example um, set to hello, notice double quotation marks right here, we can access individual symbols based on their index or position like we can with an array. So if I wanted to know the first thing, that is the first entry in some array, I might access it using the zero position. Remember, of course, arrays start with zero in JavaScript. So the same thing is right here. Give me the zero entry, the zero index of some array. So this is a string, but again, many of the things that apply to arrays also apply to strings as a kind of specialized array, even if we don't necessarily think of that within JavaScript. So if I go ahead and run example one, build and play, we will see H, which is true. If this were an array, that would be the first thing at the zero position would be H of the word hello, which is a string value. So many of the things we have now learned in earlier videos working with arrays also apply to strings. And we'll see how this can be incredibly powerful in our knowledge of stuff we have within JavaScript, which again, we can use within SugarCube. So the first thing is we can access things based on their index or position, just like arrays when working with strings. So another thing we can do is we can perform an action called concatenation. In fact, we will often simply see this, and you might see this in other programming settings, settings called string concatenation, which simply means to put together. Or in another way, we can add string values. So when we add string values, unlike kind of numerical values, we're not producing a new number, we're producing a new string that's a combination of the previous things. So for example, if we might add two numbers, we would get a new combination number that is the addition of both of those previous numbers. In the cases of string, we combine them together. Or as we put in English, we concatenate them, which simply just means to put together. So we can see an example of this right here. We plus can plus add plus string data, we can concatenate, add them all together. And this can be a really useful way to combine a bunch of string values together and produce some additional single string value as a result. However, I'm gonna kind of caution people who are first learning of string concatenation to be a little careful. So in 2015, new functionality was added to JavaScript. And if you're not aware, the JavaScript programming language actually changes slightly year to year to year, starting in 2015. They add some new functionality every year. 2015, one of the things they added was something called template literals. Template literals is solving a problem that can be introduced as part of string concatenation. So in the past, developers, and myself included, can sometimes get ourselves into trouble for not paying attention to things and we're attempting string concatenation using the plus symbol. We might be accidentally adding some things or not doing things correctly and it can get really, really messy if you're working with multiple lines of things. So for example, if this was across multiple lines or is dealing with complex data and trying to concatenate it together, 
might get really complicated or really messy and it might be hard to debug. So template literals is one solution to attempt to make things a little easier. It is in a couple of ways slightly more complicated, but it is generally easier to read for humans. So what do I mean by this? So template literals uses the back ticks. In strings, we use single or double quotation marks around whatever the value is. In template literals, we use a back tick. So if you've never used a back tick symbol before, it's generally above the tab key on the left hand side of the keyboard, generally next to the one numerical number on most keyboards. So if we create some type of string value like this, we can concatenate, we can also do concatenation with template literals but we write it like this. So we have some other existing string value and we want to concatenate it, except instead of adding them together, we can make templates and then make a literal string from the result. So this is a back tick right here, and this is a back tick over here. And then in the part I want to add right here, I use the dollar sign, opening curly bracket, closing curly bracket, and the name of some variable or method or some other expression. So in this case, I want my name is Dan. Dan is an existing variable right here. And I can write it like here, and this will perform the same action of concatenation. So this right here will be my name is Dan. Now, where template literals become incredibly powerful is they allow for multi-line string values. So up here, we can't do multi-line things. It would get really confusing in JavaScript. However, using backticks and template literals, we can. So in this code down here, this line and this one, notice this right here runs into this next line, which is allowed with template literals, but is not allowed with regular strings in JavaScript. So I can create this right here as one line, as long as it has an opening back tick and a closing back tick. And then I can show this value right here in the same way we would show other string values. So if I move over to example two, password to start story, build and play, we get right here, the result, my name is Dan. And then of course, we can add string data, which we saw as the concatenation using the plus sign, adding strings together. My name is Dan using temperate literals and this line and this one using temperate literals within string concatenation all within JavaScript as well. So let's move on to example three. So like arrays, we can also test for inclusion. So one of the methods I covered in the video reviewing arrays in JavaScript uh, as an earlier video in this series is we looked at the method includes. So oftentimes we'll have a string of things. So it might be fairly long, could be multiple paragraphs, or multiple pages, or multiple doc and documents worth. We wanna know, hey, is this particular string in this larger string? In the same way we might ask, is this particular entry in this larger data structure like an array? So the method includes also works with strings in the same way it does with arrays. So we can test if text includes some substring, some smaller string and a larger string. If it does, then we can do something as a result. So if I just had some random words right here and I tested, does this include apples? then it would show us if it does or not. So the includes method, just like we saw for arrays, also works for strings. So if we go ahead and shift over here to start story, build and play, we would see the same thing. It does contain apples and it does. So as well, let's move over to example four. So pretty commonly, if we have lots of string data that we might get from some source, we generally wanna break it up. And so what we can do is because strings are like arrays, then we can split up some string and create an array of some string values. That is based on some symbol or word or phrase, we can split up the string data into an array data containing substrings from that. So for example, if I had another random set of words right here, and I wanted to split this up based on the space, I could use the split method to create an array based on some string. And this can be incredibly powerful because we often represent data 
as some string. We read in that as some string and then we can split it up based on something. And I'll show another example here in just a second when we land on example five. So if we split this up by space, and then we access the first thing based on the zero index of the what is now an array, we would get system. So moving over to example four, build and play, we get system. We can treat strings as if they were arrays in many cases using the same general methods. So as mentioned previously, there are some cases where we might have lots of text. For example, maybe we're reading a text file, or we've got text data, or we're using some external source. And there are often cases where that data is broken up visually into multiple lines or multiple tabs or all kinds of different things. So in those cases, there are special values that humans don't generally see, but the computer has that it treats as visual layout instead of text data itself. In these special cases, we can look for and split up some existing text based on their presence. So we wouldn't necessarily see them as humans, we would see them as kind of part of the layout, but we can use that layout and break up things, split up, some existing strings into another array. So let me show you what I'm talking about as part of example five. So one of these examples is right here called the new line character, which simply is a visual layout data that appears within other text. We generally don't see it as humans, we would see a new line. So for example, this right here into this right here, the kind of into one line into the next line would be represented in the text as a new line character, but again, we don't see it as humans. And this, this is the same for also tab, and there are a number of other special things too. But based on their presence, we can break up some text, split some text into an array. So take a string and make an array from it. So for example, if I wanted the first few lines of a play right here that I copied and pasted, and I wanted to go ahead and split this up based on the new line, then I could get these corresponding lines right here. I could also use the fact that strings, like arrays, have a length. So we saw that arrays have a length, which is the number of things that are within that array. Strings also have a length, which is the number of things that are in that string. So right here, I, if I broke this up by lines, I would get this first line, the second line, and then this third line doesn't have anything in it, but I still broke up the string into an array. So down here, way down here, I'm saying take all this text and split by new line, split it into an array right here. Then as we saw when we're working with the for macro, we can work on the range of data, or as we might call in programming, iterating over the range. That is process or otherwise move through some structure, the total collection, the range of things, one thing at a time. So for line right here of range split text, so move through this one line at a time, and then check and say, hey, if line right here length is greater than zero, so all of these lines right here, the length would be zero, there's nothing there, but in lines that are greater than zero, show the corresponding line. Now notice, of course, I'm using the right here slash, so all these lines are continuing into each other to make this a little more organized. So if I run example five, build and play, we would see the replication right here. So we took in the data first, as a template literal using backticks. I then split my new line, and then I tested to see if it didn't contain anything, which would be these individual things in the original thing, and then I spit it back out again. There might be cases, though, where we're looking for something else. As we're moving through lines, we might be looking for particular information that's part of that line. For example, if we were looking at data that came from another source, and we wanted to create, for example, dialog boxes, we might have the person and then their line, and we could do something with that data. In this case, I'm simply showing it right here. But in more complex cases, we could take some existing other source, because it's a string, split it up, convert it into an array, move through that array using the for macro, and perform some other things with it. So we could present this in a much nicer way if we always know there's going to be a speaker and a source, or a speaker in what they're saying, speaker in what they're saying. 
So there are more, there are more complex ways to think about that, and we'll revisit that as part of a future video. But at least in this video, as we're thinking about strings, they're kind of like arrays within JavaScript. Now, there aren't technically arrays within JavaScript, but because strings date back to an earlier time when they were arrays in other programming languages JavaScript is based on, many of the things we can do with arrays, we can also do with strings, and we can also convert strings into array by splitting them up. So lots of things we know that we can do with arrays, we can also do with strings. Something special that strings have in JavaScript is concatenation, and in JavaScript in particular is template literals, which allows us to take either multi-lines of things or perform concatenation in a special way. We can combine strings into a final larger string value. All of these things are part of the string data type within JavaScript. And of course, remember, whenever we're using Sugarcube, we're also using JavaScript at the same time. So hopefully this has helped you better understand how we can use the string data type in Sugarcube 2.36. Thanks for watching.